have somebody like Gorby hanging out with you to help you plan? Hi everybody, today I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I loved in the month of April 2019. This is one of my favorite videos to make each month because I get to share some of the things I've been actually using and loving so that we can, you know, all be enabled together. I try and talk about consumerism in some of my videos, but these are the videos where I kind of let that go to the side and talk about the things I love. So let's just get into it. Today I've got some planner related things, some art related things, some non any of those related things, like I guess lifestyle very much and we're going to start with those. The first item I'm going to talk about today is an eyeshadow palette by Colourpop. It is the Misunderstood palette by Colourpop. I just said that. I'm not a beauty guru. This is from their Villains collection which if you haven't seen the artwork for this collection I 10 out of 10 recommend it. It is neon and it is fabulous and each villain has their own, they're Disney villains, they each have their own like highlighter and some other shit. I didn't get any of that. I wasn't even going to buy this palette. I would buy posters of the neon artwork but I wasn't going to buy any of the makeup until I was in Ulta and I was looking for a dark gray eyeshadow and I couldn't find in the in the drugstore section anything I wanted and then I went to the high-end section and I couldn't find anything I wanted that wasn't super expensive for a single eyeshadow. Then I saw these palettes and they were like 15 bucks or something. The color 101, this guy right here, is the color that I wanted. Like a dark, dark gray. And so that's what I got. This color Flotsam, it's like a shimmery, like one of their like squishy super shock eyeshadows is beautiful. There's so many different, like you can look and see like this color Diablo, this green is one of my favorite colors in general and when you see how it looks oh my god i'm gonna do the beauty guru swipe thing here look at that look how sexy that is oh my god so i love these colors i haven't really worn many of them except for the flotsam but i have worn the 101 the dark gray almost every single day i wear it as kind of like faux eyeliner so that i have something to kind of darken my eyes although i'm going to be getting new glasses very soon <laughs> Hopefully I won't feel the need to have to darken my eyes up as much as I do, but for now I've just been using that in lieu of eyeliner and it's been working really well. So I, I'm excited to get to the summertime and be more interested in playing with eyeshadow. In the winter I've been kind of holding up. I love messing around with eyeshadow, I just haven't done it very often lately. So when I do I'm excited to use a lot of those shimmery colors because they are so beautiful and it was super inexpensive and I love just the packaging. The second item, the other kind of beauty personal care item that I'm going to talk about this month is a hand cream. I've made no secret of the fact in these videos, especially when I've talked about like skincare and stuff like that, that since going on diuretics and having my diuretics be doubled in the last few months, I have had a lot of trouble with dry skin. Not just dry, like, but like really dry skin. And I'm at a point now where in like the the cracks the crevasses between my fingers i'm getting super crusty and it's not only gross looking it's uncomfortable especially because i put my hands on camera so often and i just don't like the way it feels and i also like hand creams to smell good and a lot of the really good hand creams that you can get from like the store are they just don't smell good at all or they don't have a smell and i like having a scent because i like my hands to smell good i wash my hands way more than I probably should. I don't like the feel of things on my hands. So the feel of a hand cream, the smell of a hand cream are both very important to me. And I have been loving the Hand Food by Soap and Glory. It's scented with original pink, rose and bergamot. Hydrating hand cream with shea butter, macadamia oil, and marshmallow. Okay. Anyway, it's just a nice like kind of thick hand cream. I like it because it doesn't make you feel super greasy, but it does hydrate. I would not say it is the most hydrating hand cream out there, but it feels nice. It helps take down some of the scaliness of my hands a little bit. It can't really destroy the scaliness because it's pretty gross, but it is helping and it just, it smells perfumey and nice. If you're so, if you are sensitive to scent, I would definitely stay away from this. But for me, I just like the way it makes my hands smell and I like the way it makes them feel. I got it at Target, I'm pretty sure. Either Target or Ulta, one of the two, I don't remember. There is one like software kind of situation. It's like cloud accounting situation. I've got like a computer program that's also kind of a web app that I want to talk about because it was tax season. I have been using since the beginning of the year QuickBooks for self-employed people. 
as somebody who stresses out about money and I stress out about taxes and I, all of that, I connected the accounts I use for business, my PayPal, my business checking account to it. And all I have to do is go in and categorize expenses and I can set rules. So like if X purchase that reoccurs or whatever shows up every time it happens, it gets categorized this way. And for taxes this year, instead of having to go and completely manually find every single thing, it actually handled most of that for me so I could just pull numbers from there for my taxes. As somebody who stresses out about money and cannot deal with finances, they frazzle me. I don't like dealing with it. Having this sort of ease the pain of it a little bit was really helpful. On top of that, it's only like I think five bucks a month, maybe 10 bucks a month, and it has been immensely helpful for me in trying to get my life together as best as I can with finances. Not sponsored, I just really enjoyed it. I will say though, although it's not sponsored, I have a referral link. If you use that referral link, I will get a Amazon gift card and you will get 50% off of your first six months if you decide to stick with it. So it's worth it's worth checking out. I re I'm not even joking when I tell you that it has been probably one of the most useful, if maybe not the most sexy thing I have invested in in my business in quite some time. This month was the month of asparagus and my whole quest to find vegetables and fruits that are compliant with a renal diet that I will actually be willing to eat and to try cooking new things. This month has been asparagus. Asparagus was not the biggest hit for my family, mostly because both my kids and even my husband aren't that big of fans of asparagus to begin with. So we were trying to find something that might work because it's fucking bountiful in certain months. And if we can find a way that we like it, not just tolerate it, but like it, it will be really helpful, especially when things like broccoli are off limits to me. So a lot of the things we tried, the kids just weren't too big of a fan of, but there was one thing that we entirely snarfed down. And the only complaint that we had about it was that the recipe did not make enough for us to have seconds. And that is the garlic shrimp asparagus skillet from the website Primavera Kitchen and I will link it in the description below and you can check it out. I have Pinterest boards for every vegetable and fruit that I am doing each month and having recipes pinned there that I've been trying. You'll be able to find my asparagus board there. Anyway, so this skillet you basically cook with hella garlic, uh, shrimps, and then asparagus with butter and then the recipe has you do it with mushrooms and no one in this house likes mushrooms especially me, I don't eat fungus. So instead of mushrooms, I did the garlic, the shrimp, and the asparagus, and then I just cooked some fresh pasta up and we served it with that. So good. I didn't even make dressing, like I didn't even do much with the pasta except for put a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of lemon juice, I added a little bit of lemon juice to the skillet as well, and a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and it was goddamn delicious. So I can handle asparagus in at least one recipe, and that would be it. Now this next thing, it's, adorable but it also represents kind of a triumph for me so it is the neon steve for vegas from chrissy Ann designs this enamel pin but also all the other things neon steve shows up in the reason this is a big deal is because i had this image of it working when i was talking to Kristen about getting stuff together for go wild for las vegas and i was like neon steve kind of like those old neon vegas cowboy signs or whatever and Kristen was like i don't know if that's going to look good or not and i was like well, we should try it so i sent her the design and she colorized it perfectly and it's exactly what i dreamed about and there are some times where I have this idea in my head and then I try to execute on it and I can't really do it. I can't really get it. And this time I got it with, of course, with Kristen as well. And it just, it made me feel so good. So I'm, it's like I haven't even taken this off of its little, like little cardboard yet because I don't know if I want to bring it with me anywhere because I don't want to lose it because I love it so much. The next thing is actually a filming thing. I can't show you it because it's in use as I'm filming this, but I will insert a picture of it right about it is the articulated arm that I got from Amazon that is holding my camera. I am using it for both these kinds of videos and face down videos. It made plan as you go so much easier because it was really easy to just pop my camera into it and get going. It also works really great for live streaming. The microphone boom arm that I've been using for years has finally started to bite the dust because it wasn't meant to like, handle the work that I was putting into it for doing overhead videos. I got this arm on the recommendation of Jessica from Pretty Prints and Paper, and I am so appreciative. It was actually fairly inexpensive, like less than 20 bucks. I use it with my camera handle and my Canon G7X Mark II. It's not supposed to be able to hold a regular camera, but using the handle and having a kind of a lighter camera like mine 
it works. I don't think it will work with a heavier camera though. I think mine is kind of pushing the limits of what it can hold up without starting to sink. But it holds phones just fine. It's meant for mobile phones and it holds my phone great for live streaming. I intend to do a video soon of an updated filming setup for you guys because it's something people have been asking for, people who have been trying to figure out how to do planner videos. Suffice it to say, it's made my filming a lot better. Better maybe isn't the right word as much as more efficient, which is better. And I appreciate it. I appreciate Jessica for recommending it to me and I appreciate Amazon for having it. <laughs> I have two art related things to talk about. One of them is cheap and one of them is a little bit more expensive. The cheap one is this. This is just a white ceramic plate from Target. I think it was a dollar. It might have been two dollars. I have found mixing paints. I have not, this is not the only ceramic thing or porcelain thing I've got. I've got several. This one has just been my favorite lately and you'll notice I haven't cleaned it because this, these paints as you're about to hear are pricey and I don't want to wash them off and waste them. I'd rather just rehydrate them and work with them. I know they can get dust and shit in them, but since I'm using them for the 100 day project, I'm not super concerned. Mixing paints on ceramic or porcelain is so much better for me than mixing them on metal or plastic. They don't beat up as much. It's nice and smooth and they just, they just feel so much better and it's been like a dream using them and I am loving it and I don't think I will want to mix paints unless I'm out and about using a plastic palette or something. This is gonna be, at least when I'm at home, how I always go. And it was cheap, you can get these fucking so many places. The expensive paint though that I'm alluding to is Daniel Smith. Now I have been eyeballing Daniel Smith watercolors for hella days now, they are professional. They are considered to be some of the better professional watercolors, especially if you like to do nature or botanical paintings because of the kind of muted colors, the granulation and all of that. I have not wanted to step into them because they are pricey. They are expensive. They're like, you know, they can cost upwards of 20 plus bucks per tube, which for me as somebody who prefers to use cheap things because I'm a cheapskate, I couldn't even, but my local art supply store is having a 30% off sale and I finally, finally bought a few colors. And the one that I knew I was gonna love because it's one I've seen used so much, my friend Jessica recommended it to me and I've seen other, different Jessica, PS, and I've seen other YouTubers recommend it and it just looks like everything I've ever wanted is this color called Moon Glow. It is so beautiful. It is actually three different colors mixed together. It is Viridian, ultramarine blue and anthraquinoid red. So three different colors in this one paint of kind of a purpley. I'm gonna show you something I did with it. I did, for the 100 day project, I did this painting of cherry blossoms only using moon glow. This is the only color I used, and pen. So you can see there just how like beautiful and different colors you can get with it. Worth the money. So I now, I think, own maybe, I think I now own maybe six or seven Daniel Smith paints, and I don't know how much more I'm gonna get right now because they are so pricey, but I am super enjoying using them. They are phenomenal paints. I will talk more about them on my channel as time goes on, and I've gotten more experience with them. But of the colors, Moon Glow, and a second runner up is very similar to Moon Glow, is, um, and this one was also recommended to me by Jessica, my, my other friend Jessica, uh, and that one is Shadow Violet, which is very similar to Moon Glow, except instead of the red, it has orange in it. They're both very, very pretty. Washi tape, washi, washi, washi. Even though I have been on a purple kick as fuck this month, it's this one from one of the more recent Simply Gilded kits. This blue kind of tablecloth looking washi that has my heart. Oh, it's so cute. I, I can see myself using this in the winter, in the summer. I love this color. This is gonna be one of those ones I'm bummed out about when I run out. So cute. And it doesn't have foil, it doesn't have glitter, it doesn't have flowers. Like none of those things that I usually love. It's just simple and beautiful. And there's something about this blue that just makes me really happy. In terms of notebooks, things like that this month, the one I am loving is this eight and a half by 11 notebook from Erin Condren that I got, I think three years ago. And I used it for a little while and then stopped using it and it just sort of sat on my shelf. It's lined with college ruled. And I had a couple projects I needed to brainstorm for and I wanted bigger paper and I pulled this out and ever since it has been, it hasn't been hidden. It's been sitting right on my bookshelf for me to use it. I've used it at least one afternoon a week for these projects all month and I'm gonna continue using it. 
it's just really nice. I'd forgotten how much I liked it. I don't know if I'm gonna buy more of these because they are really big and I prefer kind of a smaller notebook most of the time. But when I want like a full letter sized paper notebook, I will go right back to this. It's just been really handy and I've forgotten how much I liked it. And the paper is nice. The paper is nice for a notebook. It feels luxurious when you write on it. It doesn't feel like five, like need five star notebooks. And so the last thing I'm gonna bring up is kind of tongue in cheek, but this has to do with my live plan with me this month. And if you did not watch the replay, I really recommend it. I know that replays for those kinds of videos can be a little tiresome to watch through, but this one dude wound up becoming at least in some part kind of satirical of the planner community, especially the bullet journal community. I wasn't trying to be mean. I was trying to poke fun at some of the trends. And I don't know what came over me. Maybe it was the hard cider, but when I was looking for props to bring out, I dug out my Gorbachev nesting doll. That was my great aunt's for the new hashtag planning with Gorby. And I plan to bring Gorby out, no pun intended, on videos. And I will surprise you with Gorby from time to time. This Gorby right here brought me so much joy so much joy. Not only because I had a use for it, as opposed to it just being something I'm like, oh, I don't even know why I own that. But because it brought you guys joy. You guys were all kind of like weirded out, but yet thought it was hilarious. So yeah, my little Gorbachev nesting doll, you now have a purpose in my life, my dude. I hope you're happy. And there's one thing I wasn't even gonna mention, and I'm gonna mention it now when I was thinking about something that just brought me so much joy. My husband and I have been watching the Santa Clarita Diet. We are only through the second season. We stopped to start the third. The last episode of the second season made us both laugh so hard. We almost cried, our stomachs hurt. We had to rewatch the last bit of it because we couldn't actually hear some of what was said because we were laughing so hard. I can't even think of, no, that's not true. Girls Trip made us laugh that hard. I was trying to remember the last time we laughed that hard at something, and laughter is something I strongly prize. So I appreciate that show, and we still have to watch the third season, but I'm loving it. And those are the things I loved in the month of April. I would love to hear from you in the comments things you have been loving this month. Enable us, tell us all about it. Do you have somebody like Gorby hanging out with you to help you plan? Tell me all about it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video.